stole the trains from their cabs. And throw them? How? By brakes. How could you put brakes in the engineer's cab? On a train, you have to have separate brake on each car. You know, I was thinking if a chain was rigged up to run the whole length of the train... Now, now, not... don't get another one of those crazy ideas of yours, George. It's not a crazy idea. The railroad companies would pay plenty if I could do it. Hey, look, here comes an engine with a derrick to take the cars off the track. Uh, gosh, that sure was a mess. Well, as I was saying, Dad, if I could invent a brake that would stop a train within 100 yards, the railroad companies would pay... Uh, how do you suppose they'll get those engines untangled? Uh, come on, let's go down and watch them. Oh, all right. But someday I'd like to find a person who... Well, who'd listen to me when I get an idea? A few weeks later, we find George Westinghouse at his father's small machine shop in Schenectady, New York. He sits at his desk, intent on his work. Come in. I said come in. Mr. Mr. Westinghouse? Yes? What do you want? Well, I'm selling magazines. Oh, sorry. I, I don't want any. I, I've got more to do than read magazines. And besides, I'm I'm trying to figure out something just now. I'm very good at figuring out problems. Oh, yes? Well, do you know anything about brakes on railroads? No, I, I haven't ridden on trains very much. Well, I'm trying to figure out a way to stop trains instantly. It sounds exciting. Well, it's maddening. I've tried mechanical means, and I've thought of using steam, but... None of them will work. Well, I hope you succeed. <laughs> you know, you're the first one who's ever said that. Most people think I'm crazy. Well, I don't know much about mechanics myself. But there's a lot of famous people who write for this magazine. Maybe some are mechanics, and you might be able to find How out something... How much is your magazine? Two dollars a year. But you don't have to pay it all at once. If you just pay me 50 cents now, I'll then I'll take it. Here. Uh, here's your whole two dollars. Oh, thank you. Thanks ever so much. I'll leave this copy with you. All right. I do wish you luck. All kinds of it. Much obliged. Well, I, I won't bother you any longer, Mr. Westinghouse. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, there ought to be a law against girls like that selling magazines. We can't refuse them. Hmm. Now, here's an article that looks interesting. Drilling tunnel through the Swiss Alps. Using drills operated by compressed air. A tank of compressed air placed at the distance of... Compressed air. Why didn't I think of that? George, have you gone over those accounts for Mr. Barnes? The estimates... Father, I, I finally got it. I know how to make a break that will stop a train almost instantly. Are you still thinking about that crazy idea? It'll work by compressed air. Compressed air? Yes. I got the idea from this magazine article. It tells how they're using compressed air in drilling a tunnel through the Alps. I can use the same principle on brakes. You could have one valve near the engineer's seat and... Even if the, the idea other... was good, how could you sell it? Well, I, I'd have to make some models and have a practical demonstration before some big railroad company, but well, before I could do that, I'll, I'll, I'll have to have... Some money. Yeah. I, I was thinking, uh, well, I, I was wondering if you'd let me have it. Me? You want me to lend you money on this vile scheme? Uh, I don't believe your idea is worth a dime. And as a hard-headed Dutchman of long standing, I don't intend to invest one solitary cent in it. All right, suit yourself, Dad. I'll find the money. I don't know where, but I'll find it. word, the young inventor managed to get financial backing from a wealthy friend. Then, after months of discouragement, he secured an interview with W.W. W. Card, president of the Panhandle Railroad. You see, Mr. Card, the air is constantly under pressure, and when the engineer opens the valve... Yes, I understand. 
I've heard about this invention from some of the other railway officials. Well, all I want is a chance to try it out. One demonstration and you'll be sold on it. The directors have talked it over. We're willing to let you equip one of our trains with your air brake. You... you will? Yes. But, of course, you'll have to do it at your own expense. And you'll have to pay the company for any damage to the locomotive or cars. Well, that... that doesn't seem right. Why not? The train might be wrecked. Why should we risk our stockholders' money on an invention that has never been proven? Oh, I won't wreck the train. My air brake is safe. Well, you can take our offer or leave it, just as you please. Of course, if you have the money... Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the money. Very well. You put your brake on the train, and we'll have all the company officials on board to witness the demonstration. And from your sake, Westinghouse, I hope it works. <laughs> Yes, yes. I've just been giving instructions to the engineer. Well, what's the program? Well, we'll wait till we get out of the city. Then the engineer will try the brake when I give the signal. Well, it better be a good demonstration. All the directors are on this car. Well, you better climb aboard, Mr. Card. We're leaving. Right behind you. Oh, the war. Oh, well, that's There's a man laying on the track. He was uh, going across in a wagon. The bolt and threw him off. Why, a few feet more and well, he'd have been right on top of him. That don't knock us all out of our chair. Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Card. There was a, a man on the... Yeah, you see? The conductor's picking him up now. Well, would you call that a practical demonstration, Mr. Card? The first time the air brake was used, it saved a man's life. My boy, do you realize what this invention means? Remarkable. Westinghouse, this air brake will revolutionize the railroad business. By 1871, the air brake was adopted by every major American railroad. And in a few years, the Westinghouse Company was one of the richest industries in the United States. And George Westinghouse... A millionaire at the age of 35 turned his talents elsewhere. Then, a new invention, the electric light, sprang into existence. And, in 1893... Mr. Westinghouse, is it true that you succeeded in landing that contract to light the Chicago World's Fair? Yes, my company is going to handle that. The press would like to find out the details. Some of our experts have figured it out, and they say you won't make money on it. Electricity costs too much. Well, I think we'll clear profit. You see, I've just returned from Paris. While I was there, I bought some valuable patents from two French inventors. What kind of patents? Well, it, it's been found that electric light can be operated at a very low cost. If an alternating current is used, 
instead of a direct current. Oh, I see. Will that make a practical, I mean, for the home? Mm, I feel certain it will. These patents, together with my own inventions, will make electricity indispensable. Uh, anything else you want to know? No, that's about all. But I'd like to ask you a favor. Yes, what? I brought a lady up with me who'd like to see you. Says she's an old friend of yours. Of course. Have her come in. Thanks. He says for you to come in. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I don't suppose you remember me. No, I... I, I had don't... a talk with you one time in your father's shop. Uh, you were trying to think of a way to invent a railroad break. Oh, yes. And, and you helped me. I? I helped you? Oh, yes. Oh, no. You, you bought a magazine from me, remember? I do. To think I once met you, Mr. Westinghouse, makes me so proud. To have known a man who has done so much to save people's lives and make them happier. Well, I, I'm afraid you'll have to take some of that credit for yourself. Oh, but all I did was sell you a magazine. Yes, I know. And that magazine was the best investment I ever made. The life of George Westinghouse was 68 years of energy, of perseverance, and of success. When he died in 1914, he was president of more than 30 large corporations. A multimillionaire. Captain of industry.